per rules for the 2024 season, um, we needed to switch from our brass jet, which is here, 46 jet, to stainless steel jets. So we got our brought two sets of 46 jets over to John. He made sure they're all good so that we can put them in. We're gonna put them in right here where, while he's here so he can paint mark our nitrous fogger and then that way we're legal and good to go. And then we'll head up for a second round. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit of a chaotic start, uh, a little bit of a late start, so we're kind of rushing around. We're at Lights Out 15, South Georgia Motorsports Park. Um, fortunately, we have missed our first qualifier, which they did last uh, part of last night. Um, James had some stuff he had to do, so wasn't able to get here in time, but got the car here, got it out, got it through tech. As you guys saw, we had to change the jets. Unfortunately, we didn't get to flow the kit beforehand, so later today or early tomorrow, we're gonna put the jets that were in it back in it. We're gonna flow the system. That way we have a baseline, know how many pounds per hour we were flowing beforehand. Uh, and then we'll take it back through tech and let them do the paint marker with the, the new jets again. That way we're legal and we don't have any issues, but we need to get that checked. Um, got it. Same tune up that we ran final round at US National. Yeah, US Nats. Uh, same basic tune up. We'll uh, kind of figure out what we want to do with the progressive when we get up there. I got the suspension set up for our daytime stuff. Shocks are full, full fuel, fresh bottle, and we got some new radio headsets so I don't have to speak sign language to James anymore when we're up there. I can actually tell him over the radio what we need to do. So getting ready for our, our first qualifier, which is Q2, and uh, hopefully we can get a good run in and get up there on the boards. All right, guys, we're here Thursday morning, South Georgia Motorsports Park for Lights Out 15. And we're in the lanes for Q2. Uh, missed Q1 this morning because we had had the venue last night for it and showing up to the racetrack on a Wednesday for a weekend race. Not in the schedule. So uh, we're here. Uh, we're going to try to do something for Q2, get us on the board, and uh, see if we can't start off where we left off. Coming off a big win at US Street down a break and resetting the class record. So we're going to see if we can uh, duplicate that.
baby. Alright guys, so uh, we got these walkies now in the car so we can talk to each other and uh, 49 to 1, 449 to 1 in the heat of the day, out the box, boys, we're going to get us another win. That's a, that's a good way to start off. 49 to 1 out of the box. On a new jet we never flowed. Yeah. 105.8. With, with timing pulled up just yeah, to be safe. Right yeah. Car, that good air, dude. 105. Turn down. Yeah, that was on setting two. Uh, it was right around 800 foot. Yeah, 800 foot and about 38, somewhere between 38 and 40 water grains. Yeah, I seen that 105 pop though. I was like, is that my trigger? Did this thing just go 105? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loosened it up a little bit and you could definitely tell. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. It's like. Uh, Go look at the data to get these tires swapped. Actually, I don't even know if you should swap the tires now. <laughs> All right, guys. Just went number three qualifier, looks like. I'm, I'm really happy with that. I wasn't trying to go that fast, so it's awesome when you go a little bit faster than what you're planning on. So it just shows that the stuff that we figured out at our last race is transferring over to this one. So that was normally our 53, 54 tune-up. We went a 49 with a 1. Um, killer back split. If we would have hit a little bit harder in the 60 foot, it, it'll repeat the numbers from the last race. So that's going to be it for today as far as qualifiers go. Uh, they have a gala dinner from last year's point series, so they're going to hard stop today at 5. Uh, and then we'll pick back up tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, it's supposed to R word. I'm not going to say the word because I don't want to jinx it. But hopefully we'll get a nice nighttime qualifier. And uh, being that we're sitting pretty good, we can now go ahead and try to smack it and go even faster without having to worry about it. So it's always good to get in the field early, get a good qualifying position early. So you're not gonna worry about it you're not chasing it so that's just awesome a lot of stress off of me so we'll uh get everything packed up for the day go hang out relax a little bit maybe do some sightseeing i don't know what there is to see up here but we'll see y'all a little bit later guys we are back at the track getting ready for our next few rounds of qualifying hopefully uh it rained early this morning so james is under the car doing an oil change and i figured i'd give some of y'all a rundown on the motor because i've seen a lot of stuff on the internet back and forth nobody really knows what it is so we'll give you a rundown basic rundown of the motor and also because i keep seeing these comments james does not own this car he drives the car andrew owns the car which i'll show him later that's santa claus that's the one we always mess with um, but he's not quite here yet, so he'll be here later. But Andrew owns a car, James drives a car, I tune the car. So we'll probably have to repeat that a few more times. But I, I keep seeing the comments, so I figured I'd address it. All right, guys. So the motor that's in this car is a LSX block, masked Moses heads, CID intake. Uh, the whole motor was built by Bischoff uh, BES Racing Engines, uh, and it is an absolute stout piece. This thing is rowdy. So. Some of you guys love big block, small block. I saw comments back and forth between both, but it is an LS motor. Uh, they are mass Moses heads done by Bischoff, uh, as well as the intake and everything else. So it is a Bischoff built 461 cubic inch LS X base Ultra Street combo. Alrighty, oil is changed, shocks are set, uh, tune-up is still the same as before. The air is going to be a little worse, so I'm just going to leave it alone right now. I want to try a couple things. Me 
weekend that we're qualified pretty well right now. I don't foresee anyone really improving. Uh, it just depends on the track surface. If it feels really good, we might, you know, shoot for it. But I would like to try a couple things maybe with a dump valve just to see kind of what it does. I don't have a lot of chances to try stuff because usually we're a little bit behind the ball. So we'll kind of judge that from when we get up there. But other than that, everything in the car is going to stay exactly the same. Dude shows up to the racetrack with no fucking shoes on.
where he's from, just at the U.S. Street Nationals. He was doing wonderful stuff down there. He'll be here in the left lane, the 02 Chevrolet Camaro that has the BES power and hails out of Delaware, right? I believe so. They're, ten, they're shutting off the right-hand lane. Looks like James Tall going to go on a single. Looks like we may have a little minor cleanup there in the right-hand lane. So we're going to go ahead and send James Tall down out of Bradenton, Florida. 461 cubic inch power play. Curly number three at 449. He would love to take the number one spot away from Haley James, who's sitting back here at the ready line. They'll go down there in the left lane. What do you got there for tall? How about four, fifth? All right, so we did end up going on three, had the power in it on that one, but uh, only one at 52, but 104 short. So uh, we saw the timing pulled out from last night's pass, being that it was a uh, really good air last night. The air just ain't there today. So we could have rolled that timing back in it to have it pick up, you know, the 18 mile an hour we needed to go faster than our 49. But we know now that uh, that 0.2 degrees we did, what it's worth and when to pull it, when not to pull it. So, uh, you know, it's just qualifying. We're still really good on the list, you know. Pretty sure we're still number three. Uh, if not, we might have got bumped to four, which is no big deal because, uh, you know, number one was only a 48 with, I think, a nine or 48 with a six. So we were number three with a 49 with a one. So we're right there. It's real tight up top. So uh, we know now that we can leave with some power, go 104 on a marginal track. You know, the track was good, but it wasn't great. You know, good enough to hold the power we just had in it. And now we know we can go 104 short. And we just got to put the power in it back up top to get it to run the number to match the 60 foot. But other than that, happy with that run. It's a pretty solid deal. And uh, let's pull the log, see what you did. All right, guys, solid rip. Not exactly what we were looking for. I was actually hoping to go a, little, a lot faster than that. Uh, that was our 43 tune-up. The air had swung. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a difference, but it, it, it made a little bit of a difference. Uh, I could have rolled some timing into it. Uh, I didn't think I needed to. Clearly, I was wrong. The other thing we fought, we fought with a little bit there was we had a 21-mile-an-hour headwind. So I actually noticed that really in the, uh, the data log, you can see the front end on, and, and the, well, the shock sensors, period, on that run versus the run before. The whole car was actually pushed down about a half an inch more than the run before that one went to 49. So I was shooting for 47, 48. I wanted to go number one call bar right there, which we had the fastest 60 foot of the round, but without that additional timing out the back and uh, the air was just not as good with that headwind and everything, it, it just knocked it out a little bit. Now, I, I think everybody had a realistically struggled a little bit that round with that headwind and the air change a little bit. Um, not, I think we only one person went a 49 there. Uh, the track was definitely there for it. As you saw, we went a 104, uh, if you didn't see actually, we went a 104, 860 foot. So same 60 foot we went a 443 with, just air not as good. So I don't know that we're gonna get another hit tonight, but we got a good start to the weekend. And uh, I'm sure we'll get one more round. I'm gonna roll some timing into it, keep my eye on the air, and we'll push it a little bit harder out the back. See if we can't go number one qualifier, or at least Make sure we stay number three. So here's the data log. So yellow is the front shock. This is the previous run. You can see how much lower it actually was. Same thing with the rear shock. Dotted line is the 49 run versus that 52 run we just had right there. Which it really shows in the back split. You can see the drive shaft curve where it starts to kind of fade away from it. So that headwind definitely had a big factor on that run there. All right, guys, looks like we're not going to get our final qualifier tonight. We ran out of time, so they're going to run us right into eliminations tomorrow. So we finished. Our qualifying session, sitting number three with a 49-1, not terrible. Uh, we'll pick back up tomorrow. I believe they're going to run us on a 32-car ladder, so we should have a first-round bye, but we'll see from there. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, stay tuned. We'll see you in Elevenations tomorrow.